Today, I'm gonna to show you some color film shots I made in one of my favorite places in all of Ohio. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, here's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here, and we're gonna be chatting about something large format. For the last six years, I've made traveling back and forth between Columbus and Hocking Hills a regular part of my photographic exercise. I've shot hundreds of sheets of black and white film there, and over the years, the one place that keeps catching my eye is Conkles Hollow. Conkles Hollow is a state nature preserve, well, one of several, that's located in the Hocking Hills, but just has this wonderful, wonderful range to it. There's two trails in Conkles Hollow. You've got one that goes down into this gorge where you can see all these lovely rocks and fallen trees, and if there's enough rainfall, you can get some cool water snaking through as well but there's also this really awesome rim trail that goes up and around, and it kind of gives you a sense of some topography in Ohio. It's mostly flat where I'm from, so whenever I can get a little bit of hilliness or something almost mountainous, it's a pretty cool feeling. But Conkles Hollow was something that I hadn't really tried with color film, even though I'd been down all the different seasons. I knew that had to change as soon as I rebooted the channel here in 2020. So as far as what color film I decided to shoot with, well, it was time to consult the old pile of incomplete boxes of film. While I recommend working with color film that's fresh whenever possible, if you've got a bunch of questionably stored or expired films, you probably want to rotate through those as well, or just get rid of them if you're not going to use them. The films that I ended up choosing were two that I thought would work pretty well for fall colors. I had some extra Velvia 100 and Portra 160. Now, both of these films have a 2019 expiration date, which isn't the end of the world, but both of them were also found in some moving boxes, so I know they hadn't been cold stored in at least two or so years. My expectations? Colors weren't going to be as great as fresh film, but probably going to be fine for most shooting purposes. In order to get a great look at all the fall colors, I decided to head onto the Rim Trail, which is about a two and a half mile hike up and around the gorge. This was gonna give me just enough chance to see some of the sunrise peeking up through the clouds, in through some of this haze and raking through the trees. For my first shot, for my warm up, I decided to set up my camera, my Takahara, with my long lens, my Nikkor TED 600 millimeter F9. What I love about this lens for shots like this, it helps me really focus in on just the trees. So really the shot was nothing but trees, a little bit of the haze, and some sky as that sunlight was raking through. What I love about using a lens like this, something really modern for color film, is if you do it right, your exposure's on point, you're gonna get your colors pretty much exactly where they need to be. This is a super modern, triple-coated ED lens, and if you are a Nikon digital shooter, you're gonna love how this looks straight out of camera. So the only other thing I needed to do to cut down on that haze and a little bit of light in the sky was to use my polarizing filter. So I took out my filter holder and I still had my polarizer on there from when I was working with the waterfalls and I went ahead and placed that on my Nikkor just to cut down any extra reflection and make sure I get as much contrast onto the film as possible. For my first shot, I threw in some of the Velvia 100 and for the second shot, I just took that holder out put some portrait in, and I wanted to see what the two looked like side by side, same exact exposure. The biggest difference between the two films, the Velvia 100 is a color positive film and the Portra 160 is a color negative film. So one's gonna produce a positive that I can view on a light box, and the other one's just gonna be your standard color negative with the orange base. It's a bit of an unfair fight as how they're gonna look because I knew the, I, at this point, I know what Portra looks like. I've shot a lot of Portra in smaller formats and a little bit in eight by 10 as well. And I knew that the look was gonna be very similar to what my eye was seeing that morning. Port, Portra has this really nice soft palette that with a little bit of overexposure I gave it, might give it a bit more warmth in some of those, uh, some of those highlight areas and that's fine by me. It picked up a lot more detail in the shadows and then there's the Velvia. The Velvia looks so much more punchy right out of, like right on the light table, the Velvia just pops. It has a lot more punch and it has so much more warmth. That Velvia was so much more punchy than the Portra. On the light box, oh my goodness, there's so much more warmth all throughout the image in the shadow areas, in the midtones and highlights. I'm getting magenta read kind of everywhere. 
Now, admittedly, my scanning game for color is not on point, and I wouldn't trust everything I'm seeing here without comparing it to a really high-end or drum scan. That's a whole next level of scanning that I don't own a drum scanner, but for my really special color slides that I wanna get the best out of it, I will pay to have those drum scanned. It's not cheap, but the results are outstanding. I think they're both great, but nothing beats looking at a slide on a light box. When you get it just right, man, it really sings. Even if it's a little too magenta for my taste, I really love what it did to get those extra little bits of pop out of the oranges and yellows in that slide. So for my next shot, I was moving a little further along the rim trail and I was just taken in by all of that lovely backlight that was kind of following me along. So as the sun was rising up, the light was peering onto the trail right behind me and I just love what it did to the trees and just contrasting everything else along the trail. It just kind of lit things up from the back to the front and it had a very painterly feel. I knew for this shot there was no way I was going to be able to get everything I wanted to onto that Velvia in one sheet of film. So I decided to put on my wide lens and meter this out so I could get my portrait exposed. Here, my only goal was to get just enough shadow information to show something on those trees besides a silhouette, but also not so much that I was gonna blow out my highlights. In order to do this, I had my polarizer still on, but I also added a graduated neutral density filter. This was to allow me to knock down the exposure in the sky a couple of stops to try and bring it a little bit closer to where everything else was in the scene. The downside here is it might sacrifice some of that detail I'm getting in the tree trunks, but I kind of like how this one ended up. Another really soft and kind of warm shot that felt very similar to how I felt when I was looking at this backlit scene. And if you've watched any of my other episodes, you know I'm a sucker for backlight, so it was gonna happen eventually. So for my final shot of the morning, Along the rim trail, a little bit further out from where those trees were in my third shot, I saw this neat little bush with some really punchy ruby red leaves. The leaves were starting to deteriorate a little bit, but they were just catching a little bit of this backlight coming in from the sun on the trail. And I loved how it felt, and I was like, wow, this is enough color that I think if I get it right, that Velvia is gonna really make it sing. And I'm so glad I had the Velvia. At that point, I was like, Velvia, magenta, we're capturing these red leaves. Don't be afraid of backlight when you're working with fall colors. Those are gonna give you a little bit of oomph in texture and a little bit of difference in luminance from one area to another. I was really glad I took this shot on Velvia because that extra bit of punch uh, from the expired nature of that 100 Velvia and that slightly underexposed region on the plant gave me just enough pop and gave me a feeling of, wow, I am right there on the trail. This one I think is my favorite of the day. Usually my first shot's one of my favorites, but this one, it's, this is like textbook Velvia to me. I didn't shoot near as much as I wanted to that morning because shortly after taking that last shot, the sun was already way, way, way up. I'd been spending way too much time looking at things and metering and making sure I had the shot. So there weren't a lot of pictures made that morning and I'll chalk that up to my inexperience with color in large format. I don't shoot near as much color as I do black and white and I still consider myself a black and white primary shooter, but I think you need skills from one to inform the other. Black and white is only good when you have lots of contrast, and contrast with color is going to give you lots of punch and saturation. So being good at one definitely helps with another, but it can be nerve wracking, especially as you see the prices of these color sheet films only go up and up and up. So I'd be lying if I said there wasn't some of that pressure on my shoulders, oh no, it's 40 bucks if I mess this up. But the only thing I could do to mess it up is to not shoot at all. So if you have some film that you're sitting on, go out and shoot it. You're gonna be happier that you went out and shoot it because your film's nothing if you don't go out and shoot pictures and get it developed. So that's gonna do it for the color portion of today. But I did wanna update everybody on where we're at with our first large format giveaway. There's two weeks left. If you haven't signed up yet, you can go to mattmirage.com and fill out the form. Remember, Friday, November 13th is going to be your final day to enter for our first large format giveaway where we're giving it away an entire Intrepid 4x5 kit. So to add to this already jam-packed 4x5 starter kit giveaway, my buddy Mike Padua over at Shoot Film Co. Nice shirt, right? Alternate universe. If it's tripping you out, that's why. Blame Mike. He sent over a few other things that I can add to this kit. One of them is a 48 page photo memo. So a nice way to take notes. So there's two little notebooks in here. So you're gonna have your first 96 shots all the way through that FPP x-ray film. You can take your notes and a cool little 
Kodak Gold Pen. We're talking about color film, so that's going to go in with it. So if you still haven't signed up, you can head over to mirage.com, fill out the form, and good luck. So overall, just like any other large format practice, I'm really just glad that I got out, got some fresh air, got a lot of exercise hiking up and down that trail, and ended up with some pretty neat pictures at the end of the day. It was a lot more effort than we would need to shoot something digital or maybe even potentially higher resolution, but the feeling, the labor, it's all in there. It's, it's, it's all part of that large format experience. If you have any questions about shooting large format color films, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. I'm also gonna put some links in the description below. If you wanted to pick up some color negative or slide film materials, those are affiliate links, they help support the show. So if you need to get your film fix on, use those links below and know that you're gonna be supporting Large Format Fridays. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more Large Format Friday.